Class 1A prepares for war, Dobby and Toga make their big return, and the UA Trader has finally been revealed. Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 335 is finally out, and with it we not only get to witness Class 1A and the League of Villains prepare for their incoming final confrontation, but the infamous UA Trader has finally been revealed. Like legit, it's actually happening! But before I begin talking about this chapter, I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide on into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter we saw the remnants of senior face cream Shigaraki, who was still being torn inside and out by New Order, turn into a bat after taking the wing quirk from his Nomu and Gogo gadget himself the fuck out of the fight zone and away from the fighter jets who were in hot pursuit. During this desperate dash for freedom, we got to see Star and Stripe rampaging inside of the Vestige world, going full Doom Guy, rip and tearing her way through all for one and his quirks. While the old potato headed king of villainy looked on in vain and cursed the true symbol of peace All Might for being an international icon. After a short while Bat Shigaraki finally escaped the jets, and he crash landed into a nearby building where he confronted a random prison escapee and proceeded to mind crush him in an attempt to steal his quirk and pass new order onto him. Unfortunately for the dastardly duo that is Shigi Boy and Testicle Face however, new order had reached its limit, and was ultimately destroyed by the numerous quirks it revolted against. Although before Star's vestige fully faded away, she decided to leave the symbol of fear with one final message. You're gonna die. And in a surprise twist, a young Tenko Shimura like Houdini appeared from out of absolutely nowhere and proclaimed the name Midoriya. With Star dead, all of the other international heroes backed out of the fight, not wanting to get pulled into the absolute thunderdome that is currently Japan. But the heroes could still take some solace, as All Might happily informed Class 1A that the life of possibly the most powerful hero to ever live got them one week of training time. Hooray! And this is where Chapter 335 picks up. This chapter opens up directly where the last chapter left off, with All Might in the Class 1A dorm room explaining to his favourite class that based on the analysis performed by the American Jets, they have discovered that once Shigaraki stole the quirk New Order, it became like some kind of poison in Shigaraki's body, and as a result it has destroyed an unknown number of his quirks. Delighted with this news, Class 1A initially believes that they finally have a chance to win and put an end to this horrible conflict, as all of the civilians have been evacuated, so all of the remaining heroes can go on the attack. However, unfortunately for the class of wannabe heroes, All Might disagrees with their plan, stating that not only would just finding All for One be extremely tough as his movements are too difficult to predict, but they also aren't ready for the large scale conflict that would ensue. In the oncoming confrontation, they will have to face off against Shigaraki, All for One, Dabi, Toga, six near high-end Nomus, the remaining members of the Paranormal Liberation Front, and all of the other prison breakers that are still out and on the loose. On top of all of this, the total number of heroes has almost been halved since the war arc. So All Might tells his students that the best thing they can do is train as much as possible with the little spare time they have left. Although to All Might's surprise, in response to this, Bakugo shouts at him saying that they already have been training for a long time. As it turns out, all of Class 1A have been training every single day with the wild wild pussycats since the end of the war, and All Might just didn't notice because he was too busy following Deku when he went solo. Hearing this, Midoriya asks his fellow classmates if they will all help him unleash the full potential of one for all, but Bakugo in classic, typical Bakugo fashion yells back at Midoriya, saying that he wants to test the strength of his new technique cluster, and that Deku will be a good warm up before the fight against Shigaraki and all for one. And with this, all of Class 1A begin to discuss each of their techniques and what they need to do to train them. As this is going on, All Might thinks back to Class 1A's first training session at UA High School, and he comments how the little eggs he saw back then have not only hatched into beautiful birds, but they have been 
hatched for some time now. And with this, All Might leaves us with one final thought. Class 1A is strong all for one. Following this, the story cuts away, and it brings us to the League of Villains lair, where we see that Shigaraki has finally made it home, but he is roaring in pain. The real All for One calls out to Shigaraki, calling him another me, and he asks Shigi to calm down, saying that the quirk factor inside him is damaged, and that they just have to wait a while for him to stabilize. It's also important to note here that during this scene, we see Toga and Dobby are also present in the lair. As Shigaraki is writhing in pain on the floor, he states that he hates Star and everything to do with her, and that he just wants to destroy everything she stands for. Shigaraki then clarifies that as long as a single person remembers All Might's face, his hatred will never cease. In hearing this, All For One lets out a smile, as since they currently share a consciousness, he can also feel the true unbridled rage in Tomura's words. All for one then steps forward and pats Tomura on the head, and he tells Shigaraki that he did a good job. Because even though he didn't steal New Order, he still got their biggest wall out of the way. Although All for One does mention that even though the preparations for the next phase of his plan are ready, he wants to wait just a little longer. Dobby, clearly unsatisfied with this decision, impatiently complains that he can't stand the thought that his dad is alive and well and doing his job, and he tells All For One that he wants to act now. In response to this, All For One tells Dobby that although he and Dobby have similar personalities, there is a big difference between the two of them. Which All For One clarifies that since Midoriya has taken refuge in the well-secured UA high school, this crucial difference between All For One and Toya is what will guarantee the villain's victory, and All For One proclaims, this difference is, I have many friends. And with this, chapter 335 comes to an end, as All For One's words echo, as Shigaraki's eyes are drawn to a light in the distance, revealing it to be UA High School. And as the camera zooms into UA, we see the silhouette of none other than Toru Hagakure, aka Invisible Girl. God damn good for none invisible girl is the UA traitor. Overall, this chapter, I'll bet not too crazy, was still hype as all hell. Seeing Dobby and Toga together was fantastic, as it's the first time we've really seen Dobby since the Tartarus outbreak, and Toga since her fight with Uraraka, which was just under 50 chapters ago. So it's nice to see the duo again, and it's good to know that neither of them have hit the bucket unnecessarily. Funnily enough, not much actually happened in this chapter. Like, at UA, the kids just got informed that they have one week to train, and then they prepared to do so. And the villain scene was basically saying the same thing, except All For One just needs to rest for a week. But undoubtedly, the highlight of this chapter, and the past few chapters for that matter, was All For One basically revealing Toru fucking Hagakure as the UA traitor. Like, holy crap, it, it happened, it actually happened, it's real, it's happening. And to be honest, it is so Horikoshi to make the UA traitor Hagakure. Like, her whole character is girl who wants to be noticed, but is the most forgettable person in existence. It's so poetic that she's the one who manages to sneak into UA without anyone noticing. It also makes sense now how in all of the League's attacks on UA, she is nowhere to be seen. Like, during the USJ attack, she claimed to be with Todoroki, but he admitted himself that he didn't even know she was there. But now that we know who the traitor is, the real question is why is she the traitor? Is she evil? Does All For One have her family hostage? Or did he offer her something she couldn't resist? Like a way to deactivate her quirk? Or is this just a huge red herring and she's actually not the traitor? Who knows? But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra!